Well, it's fantastic to be here this morning talking to all of you, some of the leaders across Aston Martin Formula One team and Aston Martin Lagonda about LGBTQ plus inclusion and allyship and how we can all work together to create that inclusive culture uh, that we want to see um, and how that marries up with Racing Pride's work and the partnership that we're in together. But this can also be a really challenging area for LGBTQ plus people where there isn't currently enough visible representation. So I just wanted to get some thoughts from you really on who inspired you into in the roles that, that you're in now and, and who inspires you currently. Starting the conversations is the most important thing. I mean, I started here at Aston Martin seven years ago now and I was out before I started and coming into the business it was always something that was never really discussed. It wasn't something that I was aware of anyone you know towards the, the top of the business or really anywhere in the business as being openly as an ally or part of the community. So starting these conversations is just such an important point. LGBTQ plus people they come out to people that they feel they can trust, who they feel are going to be supportive of them, there's going to be a, a safe environment for them. Um, I just wonder whether the group has kind of experiences a, around that or, or thoughts around around that issue. Uh, he. I think we've all probably learnt from experiences that it's critical as leaders of the business that we um, help set that culture because people look up to you and often sort of mimic your kind of behaviours. So I think it's really important to set the right tone that, that we show our support um, in creating a diverse culture across the business. People are very quick at spotting somebody who's fake, who just says something but doesn't do it. So it's really important that we do walk the talk and we live and breathe, you know, a, an open culture. I mean, Michael, you work a lot with uh, people in production and obviously bringing lots of talent into different areas of the business. What's your experience been in terms of having these conversations? What I've found is role models have, for, for me personally, have changed as I've gone through my career. And I started in the car industry in the late 80s. I joined a very progressive company. It was a very male, white male dominated, all from the Northeast. Not only did we select people who were like us, we used a personality profile to make sure that the measurements said they were like us. We ended up with the least diverse workforce you could ever have. Going back to, to, to working in, in Scandinavia in, the, in 2000, you know, they were very progressive. They were doing things that I'd never seen in the UK. You know, they were very inclusive and we had a, a committee on diversity and inclusion. The sad thing is it's taken another 20 odd years for the first opportunity I've ever had to talk about this in an environment like this where it feels okay to do. Brianna, you have a, a similar group at Aston Martin Formula One that Racing Pride's obviously done quite a bit of work with over the, uh, well, about 18 months now that we've been working with the Formula One team. It's a really great group of passionate people, I think quite similar to Marcus's group. We sit there and we say, right, let's talk about Pride, let's talk about what we're going to do internally, what do we need to do, where are our gaps and where do we need to fill those? What training can we put in place and how can we call on Richard and Racing Pride to help us? Whether it's from starting policies from scratch, um, which was something that we needed a few years ago, to having a trans-specific policy, which is really incredible. Um, I think my biggest role model is probably my mum. You know, growing up in a very open household, you know, sexual orientation was not a conversation. There was never, you know, coming out for, for me and my sisters and my family. Um, and I feel incredibly privileged to have her as my role model there. And she certainly inspired me to sort of head up DNI here and continue in my efforts. We've got a lot of a lot of work to do. We are on a journey. There's plenty that we need to put in place, um, but we're going to do it collaboratively, which is really exciting. Um, and we'll see where so the year takes us. But we're certainly not stopping at Pride Month. Richard and I talked about this in advance, but I um, I can remember an experience in a FTSE 100 company with a with a lady who uh, who got married, um, but because she was gay, she'd never told anybody at work. She'd been there 20 years, never told anybody that she was gay. All she could talk about was having been on holiday. She couldn't talk about the amazing experience that she'd had in her life. And, you know, that, that has always stuck with me as, as, you know, what that person had to go through to hide their true selves at life, at work, and the amount of energy that that takes to, um, to, to present a different face to the world than the one that you, that you truly are. And that, that pains me quite a lot. For me, it's really important that you, Bree talked about bravery. There's, 
there's bravery in the people that come out in the workplace, particularly in a workplace that perhaps isn't as accepting as others. There's bravery to call out people who, who um, have behaviours or say things that perhaps are inappropriate. The next generation, being my daughter, is, 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 is somebody who I admire and inspired, um, I'm inspired by. Um, her school already is looking at conversations and acceptances of anybody in the classroom. Um, and I do feel there's this gap where in a workplace it's not quite there yet. So the educational system is, is accepting of uh, different cultures, different beliefs, different communities. And in the workplace it's kind of getting there but not to that level that we're all hoping. Um, it will take time. And I think that's one thing that we have to realise, talking about your, your, your past there, but it takes time to be a mum, to be a working mum in Formula One. It takes time to um, help inspire other people. I think from my career start, I was very much uh, working at agencies in London, where I think it's, it's uh, you know, a lot easier to be yourself. And, you know, the acceptance is probably uh, more widespread than maybe in some particular areas um, that are more rural. Um, I think so. I, I came and joined Aston Martin. I was actually a bit surprised about how sort of male, white dominated the, uh, the factory was. And I think that we still have to cover a lot of uh, ground, but I think it's really, really motivating to see that we're actually sitting here together. Um, there's something I'm very proud of, so I definitely want us to talk about it. But the project that Racing Pride's doing jointly with Aston Martin Formula One and Aston Martin Lagonda uh, in terms of students and, and encouraging students. And I was wondering if Brianna would like to touch on that. Yeah, of course. So it's the uh, Diversity and Inclusion Award uh, within Formula Student, which is Racing Pride, Lagonda and Formula One. Um, and jointly we'll be providing the prize, so they'll get a tour of our, our new factory, um, speak to an engineer and, and come to Aston Martin Lagonda as well. Um, but it's so important for us to continue that relationship, not just with Formula Student and the universities, um, and as a partnership with Racing Pride, but to encourage students to be involved in DNI, to get involved with the communities that they've got set at universities or colleges already, but holds us very accountable to continue that along their working lives. I think as we've touched on before, it's really interesting how schools and the education system are so into this, and they've got brilliant communities set up and societies and so much support ready for those students. And then they come into businesses such as ours, and we really need to prove our values. I think this really reflects the importance of this conversation. Um, firstly, because it's the right thing to do. Uh, but secondly, everyone that touches this brand, uh, this is an important matter too. Now, Aston Martin is one of the most iconic brands in the world. Formula One is the pinnacle of global motorsport. But I think what we've learned over the last 10 years uh, of, of myself working in Formula One, but perhaps more pronounced over the last couple of years in wider society, is that the shininess of Aston Martin and Formula One alone isn't enough. You know, people are judging the, uh, the team brand that they will come and be part of through things like values and purpose and real projects and substance that back that up. And that, uh, that applies to employee retention and, and retaining top talent. That applies to attracting top talent, as Heath has discussed. But it also applies to our partners. And in Cognizant, in particular, we have a title partner who this is a very important topic to not just during Pride Month, but all year round. They, they put this front and centre, ED and I, front and centre of their agenda. So it's really important that, that when we're having conversations with our current and prospective partners, that there is a, a, a written down set of values, that there are demonstrable projects that back up our purpose, and that we align at that level. And that's really important from an employee point of view, from a partner point of view, and of course, from a fan point of view. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's been a really inspiring conversation for me. It's fantastic for me to engage with all of you as leaders uh, across Aston Martin, um, to bring you all together, really, having spoken to you individually and, and work with different areas of Aston Martin. And just um, I think it's really productive and helpful to have these opportunities to align on what we're doing and, and talk about why we're doing it. So thank you all so much for your time and your contributions. <laughs>